Hi guys, uh, welcome to Naresh IT and this is Sudhakar and today we are going to discuss about uh, uh, one more uh, sub language of SQL okay in SQL server okay. So what is the sub language means uh, in previously we discussed some sub languages we discussed like uh, DDL language, DML language and DQL language okay. So along with uh, these languages uh, we have uh, okay one more language was there okay that language we called as a TCL language. Okay. So, in TCL language uh, that we called as a uh, transaction language, okay. so transaction language TCL, the TCL means the control, so transaction control language. Okay. So, now here it is a one of the sub language what we say here, this is one of the sub language of uh, SQL. Okay. So, previously in the previous video sessions we discussed about uh, DDL language, data definition language and later DML language, data manipulation language and later DQL that is called a data query language and later we will discuss now today in this session transaction control language. Okay. So, basically transaction control language or uh, why should we need uh, these commands, okay. why should we need these commands means to control your transactions. Uh, so, before you want to know the what we want to control okay, on your table means, so first of all here we will be discuss now. So, first I will be know the what exactly the mean of transaction. Okay. So, if you know the mean of transaction then you can understand that what we want to controlling here. Okay. So, simply transaction is nothing but to perform to perform okay, some operation or to perform some operation. So, here transaction is nothing but like simply we can say to perform some action, to do some action, to work that is to perform some work, some action, okay, some task, the certain task we will be perform. Okay. This everything, everything what action, operation, task we called as a transaction. For example, nowadays you can see banking sectors especially. In banking sector what it is happen who are working in banking sector those people they are going to calling like uh, the transactions are over or not. Okay. So, transaction is nothing but what it is here that operation is completed or not. Okay. For example, deposit money is a one transaction the people will treated. Like this withdraw money is a one transaction. Like a transfer money from one account to another account it is a one more transaction. Okay. So, every operation what we perform the operations in banking sector every operation we called as a transactions. Okay. Like simply if you go to ATM machine uh, through ATM machine for example, if you want to deposit or withdraw or transfer the money from one account to another account if you transfer or withdraw money from the machine then later after withdraw your amount you will be get one slip. On the slip we will get some transaction ID number. So, that means, withdraw is a one of the transaction are you performed in ATM machine. Okay. So, like every operation, so whatever the operations are there in your ATM machine, every operation they will treat it as one transaction. So, same to same how we can say the transaction is nothing but to perform some action or operation or certain task, okay. how we can say same to same in come to my database side. When come to my database side, in database side basically we are going to performing some query operations. Okay. So, like insert query, update query, delete query, this kind of data manipulation operations we perform on your table data. Okay. So, now here whatever you perform the operations on table data especially DML operations on table data, these operations we called as a what we can transactions. Okay. Why? Because I said transaction is nothing but to perform some operation. Okay. So, that means that whatever the DML operations are there like insert, okay, update and delete. So, these operations, so actually these commands why we are using means you know. So, insert command we are using inserting data. So, inserting data into table. So, that means inserting data into table it will perform some action some operation. So, that operation we called a transaction like a insert is one transaction on my table data like updating data. So, that means here also I am going to performing some action or some operation that is called a updating the data. So, updating the data it is also treated as a one transaction like a delete, delete the data from table. Okay. So, this is also we will treat it as a one transaction. So, that means insert, update, delete whatever the DML operations especially we perform on table data these operations we can call as a transactions. 
okay so insert update delete these are the called a transactions on table okay these operations by default are basically how it will be worked in your sql server that we will check out now so you know that so insert query we know update query we know and delete query is also know that Okay, but these queries once I will execute it on my table data, then default initially when you open, when you are working with SQL Server, by default SQL Server, how it will be receive your transactions, okay, as a permanently it was received, otherwise temporarily it was re received that we will check out, okay. So now here the transaction I said, so now these are called as a, what are the operations we perform, these operations we called as a transactions we call. So these transaction, the above queries, these above, the above commands are the above queries. So the above operations are controlled on table, on table data. So now these operations the user want to control. So the user has to control the above operations on my table data. Okay, now how we will be controlling your operations on table data? Let us be check out. So, to controlling purpose, that means what I said here. So, to control the above operations are controlled. I can say the above operations are used to control the data in the table. So, so I want to go to control my data in the table, then I can use my okay, these are uh, uh, transaction keywords. But to controlling your data purpose, to control the data, okay, the control the data of table, table purpose. Okay, purpose. Uh, we are going to using okay the commands here. The three commands we are going to using now. So in this three, but along with three, one begin transaction keyword also we are using now. So in this my first one, I can say begin transaction keyword is mandatory. So because whenever you want to write, whenever you want to perform your transactions, then the transaction, this begin transaction keyword is mandatory to use in your SQL Server. So this is one keyword I am using and later after that the one more command was there commit okay and later one more was there that is called as a rollback and one more command was there that is called as a save point okay so now what it has happened so to control the data of the table okay for that purpose i am going to use in this t cell commands okay so let us see one by one these commands how we can use it first of all we will go to our sql server management studio so why the users are required uh, these t cell commands uh, means uh, i will show you a small example for easy to understanding purpose okay so first of all what you want to do you just go to open your microsoft sql server 2014 or or 16 or 12 whatever okay so now uh, now i'm going to open my sql server management studio and uh, later you know how i'm going to connect it here so i just connect it. So after connecting here, then uh, first you want to understand the uh, T cell commands why we want to use. If you want to clearly and easily, if you want to understand, so first uh, what I am going to do here, the same steps you have to follow, then you can understand that why the T cell commands we need and we required. Okay. So let us see now. So I want to connect to my SQL Server Management Studio, and after connecting here, uh, to take one new query option now. Okay, so I am going to take one new query option. So later what I want to do, you just uh, select your required database, whatever the database are you created in your server, okay, the database you just uh, select. After selected what I am doing here, okay, first I will create a sample table. So like create a table, branch, branch code, in teaser, branch name, the varchar of some size and I will take your location, the branch location I am taking now. So this is also I just pass varchar of some 50. Okay, so now after that I just go to to execute this query and you know the table was successfully created. But after table was created, so now after created my table, you just call your table. Okay, I just calling here. So branch on my okay. So once I will execute, it will be displayed on my output screen. But whatever the table I was created with the three columns B code, B name, and location. Okay. So now in this table as of now there is no data so that means it was just empty table okay one new table I was created without data is one small empty table I was created. So now what I am doing here on this table the whatever the empty table was showing here on this table I am going to perform some DML operations. But when you perform DML operations what it is happen okay then you can see that for example so now I will perform my operations okay I just go to testing or testing my operations one by one. Okay, so let us see now. I am going to test now. 
So, my first uh, transaction of DML is insert command. Now, I am going to insert. Uh, so, insert into. So, my table name is branch and I am sending values of. So, now branch code 1021. So, I assume like this my branch name is SBI branch. Okay. So, now this branch is located for example, you can take your Hyderabad. Okay. So, this is one record I am going to inserting into my empty table. That means, this operation I was perform, going to perform. Okay, I am going to perform. When I am going to perform means when my table is empty. So, that means my table position is exactly which position was there in my table means there is no data in my table. This is my table position. Exactly at this point of time, the user is going to execute your query. So, now when my table does not have any data, it is empty table was there exactly at this point of time. Now, I am going to executing one operation. Which operation I am executing here? Insert operation I executed on table. Now, I just go to execute this query, then you can see. Once I will get this query or I executed this query, what it has happened? One row was affected. One row was affected. After affected, you just see whether this record is inserted into your table or not successfully. You just call your select statement, then you can see it. So, once you can check your the record that means the record whatever the record values are you inserted there. So, the values are successfully inserting into my table. Okay. So, now okay fine. So, one operation I inserted, but here next after perform this operation after perform this operation. So, I am going to previous position. Now, tell me I, I want to go previous position means what is my previous position of the table empty. So, that means there is no data in the table. At that position, I inserted my record. Yes. Ah, then, now what I am asking here after query is executed on your table, now again I want to go for my previous position of the table. But how we will go? How I will get my previous position of the table? But do not use here delete and truncate command. So, without a delete command, without a truncate command, I want to go my previous position of the table. Okay, for that purpose, we have some idea, some people they thought like that, yes, I can use my rollback keyword. But when I am using rollback keyword, let us see some people they think like that, if you want to go the previous position, then I can use a rollback. Yes, of course, I am using rollback for as per your request. Begin transaction, rollback transaction, I use it. So, once I am going to execute this rollback transaction keyword and see the rollback transaction was query is successfully executed. But your action was performed on a table or not, you can check. Perform? No. So, that means, will you get your previous position or not? No, we are not getting previous position. So, that means, here what you understand here, whatever I inserted the values or record on a table, that values are permanently executed. Okay? That means, my query is permanently executed on the table. So, that is why when user try to roll back after performing your operation, the user try to roll back, but that was not happened. Yes or no? So, now see, I roll back here. So, again one more time I will show you, I will roll back now. It is executed successfully, but you will get your previous position of the table? No. That means, what you understand here? That insert operation is permanently executed on a table. This is one problem. Okay, you just keep it like this here. Next operation I will go. What is our next operation? Update. For example, same operation I am going to take. Update branch set Mumbai where. So, B code is equals to 1021. But can you see 1021 branch location is what now? Hyderabad. That means, Hyderabad is already existing in my column. That Hyderabad I am going to changing with the Mumbai. Okay. So, let us see, I will perform this operation. Again, your update operation was successfully done. That was over and later you just come out to check whether update was successfully done or not. Done? Yes. But this update operation, whatever I changed, Hyderabad to Mumbai, then what I am asking again, after update operation was performed, again I will go to my previous data. So, whatever it was there, the previous data in the location column that is called Hyderabad, HYD, again that data I want to need. So, again I want to require, that means again I want to go my previous data, the previously what it is there in location column, the same data I want to take again. For this, this purpose also, for example, are you going to perform your rollback transaction? For example, you have a doubt. So, let us see, I am going to execute it again. 
So roll back transaction query is executed, but action was performed or not, you can check. No. So that means again, the latest updating data only available in the location column. Okay. So I am not getting the previous data HYD. Okay. This is one update operation we perform. In the same to same, next one, I will go for here, delete. So delete from, I will take now what now, branch where, for example, B code is equals to 1021. For example, user is performed this delete operation on my branch table. Again, I am going to execute it. Operation successfully executed and come out and see your record was deleted or not. You can check. Record is deleted. But later after deleted, okay, after deleted your record which was there in the table, then the record again I want to restore. But how I can restore here? Deleted, already deleted, but deleted data how we can restore? Okay, so you have a idea. What is that? I want to use rollback transaction. So, okay, fine. I will go to rollback transaction. Again, I am going to perform after delete operation on the table. So, again, I will go rollback. And you can see that once you applied rollback transaction and call your table, where is your data? So, data is not uh, restored. Okay. So, that means what you understand here, okay, the finally what I am saying here, I was created a small table without data and after creating the table, on that table, I was performed the three DML operations I performed. But you are carefully observed, whatever insert, update, delete you performed on a table, these operations are, these operations are permanently executed on a table. So, once my operation is permanently executed, what is the problem here? I cannot roll back. That means, once my operation is permanent, that operation I cannot cancel because that operation is a permanently executed. So, permanently executed means the user does not have a chance to cancel those operations on the table. So, this is one of the problem by default in SQL Server, insert, update, delete. These three operations are what the people are saying that in SQL Server, in SQL Server, these three operations are, that means simple I can say, by default, by default, the DML operations, by default, the DML operation, DML operations means what we discuss here, first one insert, next one is what, update, next delete. So, the DML operations are, which type of operations means, the operations are which type here? Auto commit operations. Okay. By default, your DML operations are which type here? Auto commit operations. So, now auto commit operations. What is mean of auto commit? Okay. So, I said these operations are by default, the DML operations are auto commit operations in SQL server. Okay. This point I was given. But here, the underlying point, what it is here, you have a doubt, what is the mean of auto commit? Auto commit is nothing but what? Okay. So, let us simply saying that auto commit is nothing but, okay, the transactions are permanently or automatically executed by system. Okay. That is called auto commit. Commit is nothing but permanent. Automatically committed. Who will committed here? Your system is committed. When it is committed, whenever user perform your DML operations on the table, each operations automatically committed by system. That is the nature and that is the point of your auto commit. Auto commit means system commit the DML operations, the DML operations which was, which was performed, which was performed, which was performed by, by the user on a, on a table. Okay. So, this is what I am saying here. So, system commit, that means system by default it will commit. Okay. So, auto commit is nothing but system committed. Okay. Otherwise, I can say committed. Okay. System committed, the DML operations which was performed by the user on a table automatically. So, automatically when system by itself it will commit, then it is called a auto commit operations. So, these auto commit operations, that means the user does not have any chance. Once user is performed, then system is automatically committed. 
Yes or no? So, that is why what it is happen here, after user perform your operation on the table, if user again try to cancel those operations on the table, then the operations are not cancelled because the operations are already committed. Committed by who? System. So, that is why in our SQL server, the DML operations by default auto commit operations or auto commit transactions we called. Okay. So, that is the reason the user does not uh, roll back. When user try to roll back, operation was not cancelled. So, that, that what I want to do here, these auto commit operations or transactions, I was converting into explicit transactions manner. So, auto means implicit. So, implicit transactions, I was converting into explicit transactions. So, when you convert uh, implicit to explicit transactions, that user has a chance to commit or roll back. So, that means the choice is when you converting your implicit transactions is nothing but auto commit transactions. Once I converting into explicit transactions manner, then only the user has a chance to commit or roll back based on the requirement. But how to convert this auto commit operations to explicit means at this point of time, the person, the programmer is using TCL commands. So, with the help of TCL commands or transaction controlling language commands, then user is converting implicit transactions to explicit transactions manner. So, once I converted here, once I converted from implicit to explicit, then only user will commit. Whenever user required, he will commit. Otherwise, he can roll back. That means, the commit and roll back, the choice was taken by user or programmer. At this moment, then user wish he can commit your transaction when you required, otherwise my transactions I can cancel. Okay. So, this kind of uh, the facilities I will be get when I am using TCL language commands. So, this is what it is here, introduction what it is happen. Okay. Now, up to your auto commit we discuss, but this auto commit operations how to convert into explicit transactions how we can convert. For the converting purpose, my TCL commands, how I am going to using. So, that we will see in the next video session. Okay? So, thank you. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you so much.